I had been using Android phones for the last 12 years, 18 devices running Android, but I also had a couple of Nokias and iPhones in between, just for a couple of weeks, two months maximum. I got so used to the Android system and what the phones had to offer that every time I got to a crossroad, I never felt the need to jump ship because of the features that the Android phones had to offer. The time had come to try something else, mostly because of two reasons. The first one is the ecosystem and the second reason is that uh, I wanted to try something new. So I've done it, I jumped ship and I got myself the iPhone 13 Pro and in today's video I will tell you what challenges I encountered by switching from Android to iOS, hopefully this will help you decide if you want to make the jump or not. What features I lost by moving from an Android phone to an iPhone? I can start with the customization. More specifically, the launcher. I had Nova Launcher installed on my S10 Plus, had hand-picked widgets based on my needs and hyperlinks for every icon on the screen. I know that iPhone 15 has widgets as well as the app called Shortcuts, which I haven't used it yet. However, it was nice to play around with the launcher and make the phone more personal. This can also be a good thing, but you will see later. The always on display is a feature that I miss. Having to press the button or to double tap the screen to see the notification is kind of old school. I am aware that the always on display drains the battery, but it would have been a trade that I could have lived with. The next feature that I am not too fast about it missing is the battery percentage. As always, it is nice and useful to see this information, but there are widgets that have this information. The last feature that I miss is a loss, but also can be called a pain for not having it and it is the dual SIM slot or micro SD card slot. It is very useful to have two SIM cards in one device rather than moving around with two phones, especially when one of them is a work mobile number. It is easier to charge only one device than two and it will take less space by having only one phone. If you do not use a second SIM card, then you can use that empty slot to bump up the storage on the device, which on iPhones this is impossible. Texting takes a lot of time on any device, especially on the phone. Being used to the Samsung keyboard, it took me some time to get used to the keyboard on the iPhone. There is no numeric road, although there is space for it. There is no comma and no dot on the main screen. Plus, the symbols are placed different. To give you an example, the exclamation mark on Android is on the left side, while on iOS is on the bottom right side. And there is no option to change the language by sliding on the space button. Another feature that I lost, and I really miss it, is the fingerprint reader. I got so used to it that I didn't want to let it go. It was fast and accurate, although there were times when I had to press multiple times on the screen or had to type in the passport as the fingerprint reader failed. The faster reader I tested was on the S10e, fitted on the screen lock button, but the one on the S10 Plus was decent enough. There was no need to have any light to scan my face, I could touch the fingerprint reader and unlock the phone in pitch black. I wish Apple will bring back Touch ID. There is enough space on the phone to fit it. With this move over to the new device, I gain a notch. Well, I am not too fast about it. A whole punch camera would have been better and more information was visible on the notification bar. But at first glance, I wasn't too bothered. I started to notice the notch when I watch videos being in both portrait and landscape mode. The last feature that I lost and I feel is disappearing is the headphone jack. Now, you might laugh at this, but it was very useful. As the S10 was uh, the last S series with a headphone jack, I kept it for as long as I could. It is not a deal breaker, I wish it could be present on any device. As I work from home, I use a headset to chat with my colleagues and to have a better audio quality. After I finish the conversation, I plug the headset to the phone and continue to listen to music or podcasts. I can use one headset with multiple devices. Now with the auxiliary port gone, I have to use two headsets, one with the phone and one with the laptop. I could go for an adapter, but this will mean that the iPhone or any device without a headphone jack is not as portable as I want it to be. This is my opinion, let me know what you think in the comment section below. It is time to move to the features that I took the hit for not having them on iPhones and I will start with the one that probably everyone was hoping for, Type-C port. This was a letdown when the Lightning port was shown on the iPhone 13. With all the important and pro devices from Apple having Type-C port, it was a no-brainer to add it to the new iPhone, but it wasn't like that. One extra cable to carry around. 
With Type-C port comes a lot of opportunities, like fast charging and reverse charging, and portable SSD support, but I do not think Apple wants to grant access to these opportunities, and uh, I'll tell you why in another video. So consider subscribing and click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. With this Lightning port, the iPhone becomes the only Pro product that focuses on only what it has to offer, rather than what it can do with third-party gadgets. When someone gets a new phone, the first thing that needs to be done on the old one is a backup and then to transfer all the data to the new phone. Now I've encountered three challenges. Apps, WhatsApp messages and media. There is no way to move the apps from an Android phone to an iPhone. So I had to write down all the apps I used on the old unit and then manually download them on the new unit. I had over 150 apps, so you can imagine how long it took and I haven't installed all of them yet. Then I had to remember all the login details, which was not fun at all. To move WhatsApp messages from Android to iPhone is a no-go, impossible. It can be done from Android to Android, regardless of the phone make and model, but it is not possible from Android to iPhone and vice versa. So yeah, I lost all the communication. Then, for the media, I could have saved the photos and videos on cloud, but because I had over 250 gig of content, this was not possible. I saved everything on an external SSD, thinking that I can copy all of them to the new iPhone. Spoiler alert, it is more difficult than you think. The last feature that I lost, and uh, I started to feel it recently, and I really want it back, is the back button. I cannot express how much I miss it. Without this back button, I have to use the iPhone with two hands, because I can't stretch my palm or fingers all the way up to the left corner, especially if I was to have a Pro Max in my hands. Now, could it be done by gestures? I do not know, but I will look into it. Okay, I finished complaining. Now it is time to tell you what I gained from switching from Android to iPhone. The first on my list is the ecosystem. As I have multiple Apple devices, it is so easy to sync all of them. When I set up a reminder on the iPhone, it will automatically appear on the iPad and on the MacBook. And this without using any third-party apps. It is very convenient. Also, AirDrop is easy to use and is quite fast. It can be done on non-iOS devices, link below in the description if you want to check it out. But it takes longer and the process is not that easy. Second on my list is the look. The iPhone looks apart. You can always distinguish an iPhone from a bunch of smartphones. It looks well made, it shows quality and it feels great in hand. I was always fan of this squarish design ever since the iPhone phone was launched. That was and still is my favorite design in a phone, like ever iPhone's menu is simple. I do agree that sometimes it takes ages to dig for a setting, but this can be the case on an Android phone. The main screen has all the apps there. There is no app menu at all. Well, there is an app gallery. Widgets are available which are well received. With this simplicity comes the boost in performance. Although the iPhone 13 Pro has only 6 gigs of RAM, it is super fast and can rival any Android phone with double the RAM. iOS doesn't have any skin, doesn't allow for any to be installed unless the phone is rooted and doesn't duplicate apps unless the user wants to. For example, on Android, I stopped using Gmail and I only use Samsung Mail. Same goes on the current phone where I use Apple Mail. In other words, I use their own services without installing third-party apps that do the same. As I care about my privacy on apps and on the browser, I was happy to see that iOS asks for permission when an app is installed first time. I switched off the app tracking option for a safe state of mind. I think Apple is the only one that offers system updates and support for a longer period of time, whereas some Android phones will stop offering these updates after a couple of years. Here you have it, my losses and gains by switching from an Android phone to an iPhone. If I can choose two things to move to the iPhone, I would choose the Type-C port, which is a must, and the back button. Hopefully this video will help you in your decision to stick to the same operating system or to jump ship and try something new. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.